Good morning, and welcome to the DFS Army YouTube channel. I am Razzle11, and you can find me on Twitter at Razzle11Grinds. Going to take a look at the pitching for today, the 30th of July. We have an eight-game main slate. Uh, some spread out games today. Um, we're not quite sure about the weather yet. Waiting for our weather station to be updated. Um, I know DK has some some weather listed potentially um, in spots, but I'm thinking that we get some clear action. But uh, I'm going to leave that up to the weather professionals to give me updates um, at some point this morning. So without digging into that, let's just dig into the pitching options on the slate. Clear cut at the top, Luzardo. Uh, just absolutely elite at home. Super strong K rate, coming off of a 13 strikeout performance. Uh, get, getting a couple extra days of rest since that performance. 28 plus DK points. And five of his last six starts. With two of those starts being 32 plus. Uh, he's just getting it done. Uh, he struggled against St. Louis. The walks were up. K's were down. But still strong ground balls. I am a huge Luzardo fan. He is a minus 155 favorite. This game actually sits with a total at just seven right now. Um, which is definitely extremely low. Uh, and that's because, on the other side, Detroit is throwing Scooble, uh, who has looked really strong in his return, up to 82 pitches. Um, with how they handled him the first few, I wouldn't be shocked if he sits around 80 to 85 pitches for a few starts as well. Uh, but he just showed us what he's capable of uh, in just 82 pitches his last start. A 32.1 DK point performance. Um, K's are pretty strong. Uh, it's a solid matchup for him as well. Uh, you know, the issue is that he's probably stuck to the five innings. Um, you know, which... Probably hurts us more on FanDuel if you're a FanDuel enjoyer. Um, but, I I mean, it's it's hard to ignore Scooble uh, in the matchup in that game. The Verlander in between them here. 9400 is a pretty decent price point for him, considering that's 1600 less than Luzardo. Uh, Verlander, 25-plus DK points in three of his last five starts. He's not faced Washington yet. Uh, but like Luzardo, who's been spectacular at home, uh, not as big of a K guy any longer. Um, but overall numbers still really strong. Uh, anytime you're averaging over 20 DK points per game, uh, that's that's a strong marker to pay attention to. Coming off of a really strong start, uh, the one issue I do have is the walks numbers. Um, in Washington... Doesn't strike out a whole lot, which brings more walks into play because they do battle a little bit more. Um, so Lo Verlander's going to fall below, you know, Luzardo and Scubo for me, but he's definitely in play today. Uh, eight games late, these three guys at the top for sure uh, are in play for us. Maeda is a minus 170 favorite. Was really strong against Kansas City the first time he faced them. It's been far better on the road, uh, which is where he is today. So I'm definitely interested. Uh, hasn't given up more than three runs in a start since April. Uh, really, like his overall numbers are just so skewed by this one start against the Yankees. Uh, you take that out and all his numbers are extremely strong overall. Uh, so I'm interested in Maeda. I'm Kind of interested to see what the weather is going to be like in Kansas City uh, because it has been hot and wind blowing out uh, much of this week. Game total just nine, so I'm thinking it's not as an extreme hitter situation as it has been. 
Uh, the Twins are struggling a little bit, but uh, I think I like Maeda to turn it around uh, with a solid performance. Cleveland and Chicago. Uh, Cleveland's a minus 145 favorite. The game total of 9. Savali is a guy that I not, normally just don't want to play, but um, he's had some really strong performances of late. Obviously, this Kansas City game, this one against Kansas City as well. Um, I didn't really think that he had this kind of upside consistently. Um, you know, he's not a huge K guy, but he obviously has the ability. Uh, he's given up. More than two runs just twice in his 12 starts. So um, we really need to pay attention and take a look here. Uh, his numbers on the road. His fantasy points are down because his strikeout rate is worse on the road. But everything else just looks really strong on the road for us. Uh, kind of want to dig into his history against the White Sox a little bit. Because being a divisional opponent, uh, there should be plenty of of starts in the past against them. Kopech in the other in that game on the other side absolutely dominated this Cleveland squad earlier. Better at home, but he gives up far more home runs. Uh, right now he's just kind of going through a stretch where he's just not as good as he showed that he could be. I'm going to have to be off of him, and it pains me because I know at any point he could do this again. You know, that was against Cleveland already, dropping 36. But um, I just don't like the recent trends. Uh, so I'm just going to play to that. It could bite me. Uh, it definitely could. Uh, but we do have to fade some guys. So I'm going to go with a no on Kopech in my initial build. Uh, Smith Schauver getting the call up to make this start here against a Brewers team that I like picking on. So, uh, big issue here for me is five home runs allowed in 16 and two thirds innings, six walks. Um, those are, those are numbers that I don't really love. His last two starts are pretty bad in the major league level. I'm not sure, you know, if he's going to throw, six innings at this point or not, but, uh, you know, I'm just always intrigued by pitching against the Brewers, to be honest. This game has 11.5 total right now. Uh, Atlanta is a minus 205 favorite. Um, I probably can't go with smith Shaver, but, you know, initially I really wanted to. I think we're going to end up going, you know, with guys like Christopher Sanchez. Uh, Sanchez is coming off of a seven-inning performance against a tough Oriole squad. Where all he gave up with two solo home runs with eight strikeouts. He's taking on a pit squad that I think uh, can be gotten. I didn't. I was out playing ball all weekend, um, so I didn't see the box score from yesterday's game. But I know that Zach Wheeler had a dominant performance in this series. Philadelphia is a minus one forty five favorite. Game total of nine and a half seems a little high to me at first glance. Um, so that makes me want to dig in a little bit more uh, just to see if there's something that I'm missing. But right now, Sanchez is firmly in my pool. Belak, uh, much stronger at home, which is where he's at right now. Uh, is capable of, you know, 24, 26 DK points. Uh, Tampa Bay, it's not the same Tampa Bay squad of the first month and a half of the season. Uh, so there is some K upside in this matchup. But I worry about these walks. Um, and if you've been reading my content or listening to it for years now, uh, walk rates for pitchers are something that I focus on a lot. I just don't like to see spikes in walks uh, over stretches. Walks turn into two and three run home runs, which turn into big innings, and those are some huge negatives for our pitching, especially on DK, because of the efficiency part. So you get dinged for the the hits, the walks, and then all the runs that happen. 
so I don't know that I'm going to go to Belak. I'm going to dig in a little bit more in that one. Uh, right now it is a coin flip with a total of nine in that game. Kyle Hendricks, I pretty much never use Hendricks, so I'm just going to skip over him. Um, and we can look. Road numbers have been strong. He is on the road. Uh, but again, in St. Louis, it has been really hot. Uh, this week, uh, hot weather is ripe for offenses. So I'm going to want to dig in and see uh, what the weather is like in St. Louis. But I just don't see myself using Kyle Hendricks. Don't see myself using Rich Hill. Uh, Rich Hill is a guy that could get scratched and moved. He's an, uh, an important piece for a contender, but he can help. Uh, he just hasn't been strong. Uh, there's just no reason for me to consider Rich Hill. If Rich Hill beats me, he beats me at oh well. I'm not picking on Atlanta. Not, I mean, I don't mind picking on the Mets generally right now because they're they're in sell-off mode, and I'm sure that's going to affect the, the clubhouse, but Trevor Williams is not that guy for me. Steven Matz is intriguing, but the Cubs are hot. So, uh, Matz has thrown eight and a third against the Cubs, struck out eight. Like, those are strong numbers against the Cubs already this year. He's looked pretty strong his last two outings. Three out of his last four have been really great. Uh, I am intrigued enough by Matz that he is going to make my pool, uh, unless we find out that it's 90 in St. Louis and the wind's blowing out at you know, 15 miles an hour or something. Uh, Matt's is definitely going to be in my pool. Ryan Yarbrough. Man, I the fact that I'm even considering Yarbrough here uh, just kind of tells you everything you need to know. He's around one earned in three of his last four starts. Uh, two of the three since coming off of the IL. The biggest thing here is he gets a K increase against a team like Minnesota. Uh been striking out plenty. Don't, I'm not really in love with it, but I understand um, the upside increase that the Minnesota matchup brings. Uh, and I mean, if he at 5300, if he drops 21 DK points again, um, he has a good shot at being in the GPP winner, unless a couple of those. Stud guys go off, which is certainly capable of doing. Uh, and then at the bottom, don't really want to dig into the Tampa Bay situation. I'm just not really sure how they're going to go about it. Um, I suppose they could have Lutello and Armstrong combined for five innings. But uh, they are both min-priced, which... Is interesting, but I'm just not going to go there against Houston. So uh, there we have it. There's a look at some pitching for today. Uh, if you enjoy what I bring to you, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, and get the alert anytime we drop videos here at DFS Army. If you want to join us, get access to our coaches, tools, Discord. I'll put links in the description below. You can use promo code RAZ, that's R-A-Z, for 10% off monthly. And as always, Best of luck, everybody.